Hey, it's the Constant Angler. Um, today I'm going to do a on the bank and an unboxing review of the Bear King Ninja Turtle, if that's what we're calling it. So there you go. There's the reel on the outside of the box. Ninja Turtle. I guess they're trying to avoid copyright there. Um, long casting, apparently. Various specs here. Let's have a little read. Ninja is equipped with a total of seven bearings, two of which are ceramic bearings. Common sense. Uh, Ninja's main gear is made of 7075 aluminium alloy, which can guarantee high strength when fishing. N good. Ninja's spool is designed with a short shaft. Yes, both spools are, which improves the performance of bait throwing and can increase the throwing distance. We'll see about that. Ninja is equipped with a sound system. When the fish pulls the spool to turn, you can hear the crisp ticking sound. Yeah, it does have that. Uh, 10 high quality magnets can reduce the phenomenon of fishing line knotting when casting does have strong brakes but we'll see what it's like on the uh out on the field in the field as such so let's open it up there we go there's the reel there's your spare spool you get a real bag and you get some instructions which are in chinese so a little pointless quick look at the other side of the box seven to three to one gear ratio five kilograms of drag I would have preferred more, more like the Commando. If they give me a deep spool, I want a bit more drag in case I look a good fish. Uh, six plus one, so seven bearings, two of which are ceramic. I won't go through the line capacities. I'll just put a little picture in picture or something for you. Uh, so there's the deep spool, little ported ceramic bearing on the end, and it's the usual pin method of... Uh, Securing the bearing in place, which I prefer to these little tiny C-clips. It just make it awkward for me. My eyesight's not what it used to be, Peter Kim. So, here we are then. Let's have a quick look at the reel. A little look around. It's sort of a titanium, silver kind of finish to it. Uh, it's glossy. Uh, has a metal handle. I think the metal cap there. Uh, quite chunky um, reel knobs. A little chunkier than others, I feel. A little squarer or something, if I compare it to the Acura there. You can see they're more rounded. A little bit more user-friendly, possibly, I think, the Acura than that. Um, there's your curved shell, I guess, which is why they call it a Ninja. Let's have a look on the side here. Ninja Turtle. Yeah, it looks more like Turtle there. Um, bit of a naff name I know, but uh, let's see what it does. So, breaks down to zero. Let's do the usual spinning of the spool. Because I know you all want to see that. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's noisy because it's ceramic bearings, but they're not as noisy as some. Um, I will say that for it. Um, yeah, they work very effectively. Great. I've got a little or no side to side play there. Let's put it on five. Ooh. Not a lot of anything at all. So they are very strong. What we have noticed is it's slightly harder to wind the handle when the brakes are on full. Whether that's the magnets are so strong they're affecting the spin of the spool or something's pushing on the spindle or something like that. Um, we're not sure, but but there's definitely that. If you see how that spins like that, as I put it down to zero, how freely it spins now. Uh, will there be a problem on the bank? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, let's have a look at the clicking mechanisms. Yeah, your star drag clicks, your end tension clicks, and your drag clicks. Great stuff. Liking that. Not too loud, not too quiet. Quite a dull sound rather than a tinny tinny sound. Uh, what else can we say about it? <clears throat> um, it weighs 170 grams, so it's quite heavy. Um, yeah, it has five kilos of drag. I prefer it if it had more because they're giving me that deep spool. Something like the Commando, which has uh, nine kilos, I think, on that. Uh, it'll throw lures from one to 20 grams, they're saying. Hmm, maybe. We'll see out on the uh, bank. It has a carbon body. Uh, you have two shallow spools, uh, shallow, uh, shallow, two spools, a shallow and a deep spool, and they both have ceramic bearings. Your brake dial. Can you hear that? I quite like that, but it's a little bit small. It's very positive though, but I mean, it does rough up my skin there. Uh, a folk with a reel is the number five has already disappeared. Uh, the rest are on there. 
A uh, little little secrecy I've noticed, which is something I did, but I'm maybe I'm just an idiot. Uh, th that bar I'm tapping there, hopefully you can see that, just below the hole for the level one. It's, it's a bracing bar, I guess, because there's nothing to do with the level one. So you can pass the line underneath that, which is not going to help you at all. So just check you don't do that. I told you about the tightness on full brakes. Uh, another photo I have found with my reel was probably just a bit of QC. There it is. This screw here is threaded in the main gear body there. It's not in that little skinny bit, the actual frame of the reel, but in that main gear body. It can't, it, it's not gonna fall out, but I can just keep turning it and turning it. Um, I can take it out, so it's not a problem to take the reel apart, and it doesn't seem to be making any difference to its performance. Uh, so a couple of little QC issues there. Um, not perfect, no. The level wind is quite exposed, the, the, the barrel of it, the thread of it there because you have an opening down below, some muck might get up in there. Let's have a look at the Acura. It's more horizontal on the, cur the Acura, isn't it? There's a little bit more protection if you see what I'm on about there. It's just a little idiosyncrasy, but if you're careful and clean your wheels, it should be okay or should be good. Uh, it has a conical line guide, ceramic line guide, so that's another good thing. Well, let's open the end plate up. There, so it's just, I'll do that again, little lever there, push forward twist pop it off and there's your 10 magnets let's put that down a second so you've got 10 good magnets i would guess they're m52s but I, I couldn't swear to it and if you look where the screws are you can see a little spring mechanism there on either screw so it does have a bit of a spring there now whether that goes in and out as the magnetic force decreases increases i don't know i guess that's the idea uh who knows? But I mean, it's all very positive that basically this circle here where the magnets are on go in or out, depending which way you're turning it. And there's your ceramic bearing. Uh, let's take the spool out. Have a quick look. There's your other ceramic bearing. Pin to hold it in place. Quite ported. Clear here. A couple of lines there. I guess that's to fix your uh, line on with. Short shaft. So that should make longer casts. Um, so I'm reliably informed the newer kit Cura does. If you're not sure what I'm on about there, let's get the older Cura, take its side plate off. See, that's got a bigger dial or at least more exposed. It looks bigger to me. Yeah, so there's a downer for it, the small dial, but it's very positive. You can see that's got a long shaft. I made a mess of that now, haven't I? Let's put that down. So there's a few differences for you. The main difference being the uh, ceramic bearings, really. Um, it is a different design reel, it's not another clone of the Dark Wolf. Something I have noticed and you'll see in the video is the gap, the tolerance between the frame and the spool is quite large. Uh, so large, I was using 0 0.6, 13 pound suffix braid and that went in between. Um, so that is possible, that is something that definitely improve on. Uh, anything else we can say about it, it's got an alloy, an aluminium alloy main gear. As I said, it's got 10 brakes. Yeah, it's it feels quite good, if not a little heavy. Uh, it's a little geary, but not terribly. Not mine, at least. I know some people have had problems with the uh, the leaving it for a while, even with the drag uh, left off. The reel sort of seized up, but that could be a QC problem. Um, I haven't had that problem. I did one day have the thumb bar, which is very positive stay on and when I turned the handle nothing happened um I did have a bit of drag on so that might not have helped and I just pressed it a little bit more and it came back on and it's not happened again since so I don't think there's a problem it's probably more than me but just something to bear in mind so without further ado let's get out on the bank I've been trying to find a sheltered area with these winds we got at the minute in the UK just to get this uh product review done and the Bear King Ninja Turtle there you go comes with two spools a deep and a shallow spool. Uh, I've got on it here at the moment. I've got uh, 0.2, uh, 0.4 uh, Kingdom Microfly. It's very thin. Uh, got an eight pound leather on there. And it's on the Mavlos Plume C602 Ultralight. Uh, we're gonna start with Cripple Jerk Law. We'll set it up so there's little or no side to side play. That's fine, let's take it back one click actually. Yeah, and the brake's on max, and let's see what happens. 
gap. It's seriously over brake there. Extremely strong brakes on this one. There is a problem with it, which I'll uh, show you. This will be an unboxing and on the bank review. I'm not expecting to catch anything. That's better. But I've come over here and the wind's blooming coming in my face here now. I can't win at the moment. Uh, let's take it down a bit more. Try lower casts. Yeah, it's going out there. I'm down to just below four, but it still feels over braked at the moment. Oh, touch a bit of weed there, I think. Take it down to three and a half. I'm showing you. Camera up a bit. Yeah, it's going out there, but I mean, distance is held back because of uh, the wind from the side there. I should have gone around the other side, but I was around there and it was, the wind was in my face, so I come over here and now it's switched. Um, let's go down to three, so it is challenging circumstances for it. But yeah, that's straight on three, no bird's mess, nests controlled. So this lure here is about four to five grams. I will do a picture in picture. It's a standard trout bait I'd be using for, well, standard jerk bait I'll be using for trout. It is actually the cripple jerk. You can get a pack of three of these off uh, Paul Gasco of Fishing Discoveries. Uh, I'll put a link there if you want them. You also get some, uh, a lot more info on how to use them and everything. Uh, if you sign up to his email, with your email. Yeah, that's, that's a lovely cast. It's doing that easily. It's fishing well in these conditions. I'm not gonna labor around on that. Try and go down as low as I can on the brakes. We'll go just below three. Now I like that, that it's around there is the braking. You know, it's quite usable. You can put it up, put it down. That's a lovely cast. So it's casting this lure beautifully. Is it casting as far as some other reels? Well, I'm not gonna be able to tell you that today because of the conditions, but is it fishable? Can I place it where I want? Yeah, I wanted to get it off the back of that boat and I just have a nice smooth cast on this fine tip rod. So yeah, we're good for that. Let's go lighter. Let's go down to about three, three and a half. All right, so let's show you what I got now. So we just got a sort of a copy from AliExpress of a Ryuki lure by Duo, I think. Spearhead Ryuki, I think that's what they're copies of. I think it's probably by Suranoia. And this is about three, three and a half grams. I'll put the picture in picture. I'll pop the brakes up to just over three and see what it does. Yeah, straight, true. So you, you might be able to see because it's pink line. I don't you will on camera. Camera's definition's not that good and there is light, low light today. That the line is actually picking this braid up. Uh, stick with that, give it a bit more. Yeah. It's pretty accurate. Let's take it down lower. So we're smack on free now. There you go, nice true cast. No problems with bird's nests. So it's fishing this comfortably. Distance-wise, don't know. It's, uh, you know, the weather is debatable today and that wind is, but yeah, it's, it's fishing it quite well. Uh, I like the fact that the brakes are just under three. So I don't really want a bird's nest. I do and I don't because I want to show you the tolerance between the spool and the frame isn't brilliant. Um, no, it's casting that, lovely, it's, you know, there is quite a side wind there and it's picking it up and I'm on just over two. So, a nice smooth cast and it's accurate and a good distance. So it's fishable like that. But what I want to tell you about is, I don't know if it'll come out on camera here out on the bank. If you look at this reel there, let's see what you're looking at. The gap between the spool and the frame is quite large. I've had 0.6, 13 pound suffix go through that and this lighter stuff as well. And if I hadn't had the camera on uh, camera instead of video, you would have seen me with the lighter lures and this and this getting this trapped in between. So 0.6 braid will get trapped in between, 0.2, 0.4 braid certainly going to. So that will be an issue on certain days. I had a lazy cast from me there, but good distance I've got about 50 meters of uh, braid on here which is what I typically be using so for trout fishing you know throwing little jerk baits that kind of thing it's certainly gonna do it you know it's it's doing it there it's fluffed up a bit there then but 
it's hanging in the wind a bit there. So let's show you what I've popped on now. So now I've popped on a little uh, Rapala crankbait minus the hooks. This is about 1.72 grams. Uh, will I expect it to do it? I expect it to make an effort. Yeah, I broke it there. It went to the left a bit, which is what I would expect. It's uh, my timing needs to, uh, to improve. Uh, it's on free. So let's uh, let go a little earlier. It's doing it. Let's take the brake down a bit. So we're on two point two and three quarter now. Yeah, it's doing it. But today it's a bit hard for me to really whack it one. And I, yeah, it fluffed up there. It's, uh, it's, it's fighting the wind. We'll try and. Uh, so it's silly after I've just had a burst, let's just have another cast at that brake setting. So we're on brake setting of two and three quarter. Yeah, it did it, it did it. it does. We'll just have a cast down the bank here and see if it's better out of the wind. Uh, pull in a bit left there. Yeah, I'm having a release a lot earlier. Let's take the brakes down more. That's straighter and accurate now. But we're not able to really give it some. And this rod is designed for throwing this kind of thing. You know, I'm not landing it on a penny like I might with the outer bearing. There we go, that's better. Less arm movement from me. It's doing it. You know, what do you want from 20 for 25 quid? It ain't bad at all there. Uh, when you're doing this sort of casting, you want less movement of your arm it's more of your wrist there so you know I'm knocking it but it's doing it and I'm trying to cast on top of that weed when I get it right it's doing it in perfect conditions there we go it's been out there <laughs> I need to loosen up a bit so a really proficient caster could probably you know I just did it then probably do a lot better I'm still having to release it quite early though to get it to land. Let's see if we can't take it down a two and, and really. There we go. Yeah, we're getting. If you want, if you you get your eye in, it's possible. It all comes down to feel. There, yeah, we went too low. There, we're getting bear's nest just to get the thing to run smooth enough. Um, free enough, shall I say? There we go up there but yeah it's doing it but it's not comfortable not comfortable for me anyway maybe you'll you know when i get it right i'm okay but i don't feel like i could really bomb it there's not the confidence there to you know to launch it really give it some let's try <laughs> my timing's out there so it's possible with with someone very oh, that was rubbish from me. There we go. But it's not really. It's a free, you can loosen the spool up more than that by turning the brakes down. Ah, now there you go. See, it's gone between the spool and the frame there. I didn't do a bad cast then either. So there's a problem for you. There it is. The tolerances aren't brilliant. Now, you get it on other reels, but I seem to be getting it a lot on this one. Come on. So, let's back the brakes down. Check the side play. So we've got a different spool in there. I need to move it a bit, I think. Should be able to feel it rather than hear it. Yeah, that's about right. Click or two back. 
Right, on five. See a very, very slow drop. So let's take it down to four and see what we get. So I've got it on, I paired it with a Suranoia Dragon here. No, so more appropriate for the deeper spool and the lures will be thrown. And it's the QLC6102 medium light, length 6 foot 10, lures 4 to 12 grams, lines 4 to 8 pounds. I don't know the line thing. There we go, that's going out, over braked, pull into the left, which is what we expected. And we're on four. Now this might highlight, which I'll be able to show you more on the desk at home, uh, one of the problems with the reel. I'm bringing it down to three. Now we're going straight true yeah no worries with that all right brakes are on let's have a look just above two and a half two and three quarter then yeah casting beautifully is that popped up over there it's a twig branch or something bottom that's casting the bearings are noisy but not as noisy as some i'd say you know i've come across noisier ceramics if that makes sense so that's a plus for it just taking it down one click at a time now yeah and we're bombing it out there so it's fishing take it we're on two now Yeah, nothing wrong with that. This is drag a tad. Uh, line lay. It's not perfect. Oh, so I have one then. I'll show you when we get it back in. And this is thicker line, but I mean it is braid. So it's a bit left bias on this one. Uh, I'm not going to drop the brake slower than that. There's only there. I've just bird's nest. Uh, as I've said before, you know, that's into a wind and on a brake set in a two. A lot of your BFS reels, you're using them around four because uh, the brakes aren't as strong. These brakes are very strong. All right, so we'll go up a click, 2.1, flatter cast, give it some more. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the, the real, what I will say about the reel is, it will cast lures the distance I want. What distance it is, you know, without measuring it, and I might be able to do something with Google Earth, but, um, yeah. It's a uh, real bird's nest, so. But you have the, the option to put your brakes up there, don't you? You know, I've got a wide range here now. I'm just above two. So it's just about finding that happy spot where you can probably do the no brake cast thing that uh, you see casking are always obsessed with. Um, where did it go? How far out was it? No wee bank there. Oh, uh, let's break it up to about two and a half. There you go. And... Uh, there we go. That's out there controlled, not a hint of a birdie. The line lay's not fantastic, so that will also give you more bird's nests. So you're not able to use as little a break as you might be able to. God, I'd love to hit it into a big bass now, that would be fantastic. So, uh, one more click up. So just below three, which for me seems to be a happy setting for it. Yeah, a bit too much there. One click down from that, I think it's about. So we're now on two and three quarter so is it usable yes it's usable uh oh i thought i had a fish so it's usable um if that gap between the spool and the frame was better i'd like it a hell of a lot more i, I would feel as though i could give it a bit more right. so i'll do picture in picture with this so we're pushing the upper limits of this now I don't know how much that weighs, it's probably too much for the rod. The rod's rated to 12, by the way. I would say it's probably a 15 grand rod. It'll cope with that, I have thrown lures like that. And I would say this is a good, it's up around that. So let's hit the reel or handle heavier lures. 
Now this, if you look at the conditions I got here, I got really brown water, estuaries, um, muddy water. Probably not a fish here at the minute. I don't think they'll be further down the the river system if they are, because all this fresh water would have pushed them out. But you don't know if there's some food here they'll have it. And this um, this is a slapper from Rooney's Fishing Supplies in a lemonback colour with one of his hooks as well. A uh, nice little keel there with a the weight on it. Uh, but yeah, it'll be a good test for the reel. So we'll start out on five. Um, so we got a hundred yards or a hundred meters of ten pound Hercules braid on here with a ten pound fluorocarbon leather. Yeah, that pulled left. So there's hell of a lot of breaks on this reel. Down to let's go down to three. See what happens. Yeah, that went off to the right uh, this time because my timing wasn't great, but no hint of a bird's nest. Modern reel casting working together there. So let's get my timing right. There we go. Yeah, that's putting that out there. So let's actually retrieve this and see if there is any did here. Nice steady retrieve. We'll get that tail working on the lure. So I was doing that and um, yeah, I'm not sure how much drag it's got. I think it's just the usual five five kilo uh, five kilos, which is about. 10 pounds but we'll have a look i would expect it to have at least that i'm pretty sh i don't think it's one of the four kilo reels because you won't you know you don't want a deep spool with that yeah it's working it's nice it, it works i'm not got a problem with that you know the spool the the braid this thicker braid can still go between that spool if I bomb it a bit, uh, see, it's doing it nice. I can't complain like that. So it's quite usable with lures from sort of three grams up. It's doing it. How accurate is it? Yeah, look, cast between the boats there. So it's quite universal. Uh, you get away with using it for fishing for trout and things like that and Texas rigs all this kind of thing it will do it up to these heavier lures deeper spools you could put thicker braid on it but really it hasn't got the drag for that I mean that's you know it's good it's lovely let's take it down a bit more see if we can't birds nest it now See if this spray will go in between the uh, spool and the frame. Line lay again is a little left bias. Let's get things right. See, look, it's still going out there because of the tremendous amount of breaks on it. You know, I'm down below three and I bomb that one a little. There's some sort of sense out of all of this then. Uh, What's the main problem with the reel? Well, the main problem with the reel is the gap between the spool and the frame, which I'll show you a little demonstration here and now. Well, I'm going to try and show you how easy it is to get this 10 pound fluorocarbon in between the spool and the frame. There, I've done it. Can you see that? So it's gone in, it's not super easy. Um, but if I now compare that to the commando, which is a bigger reel, so you wouldn't expect the tolerances to be so good. I've got no hope. There's just not that gap there. I can see it with my eyes. It's it's that much of a difference. It's just not going to do it. Um, so, you know, we use 10 pound fluorocarbon letters. I use them all the time. And it has a deeper spool. So, um, you know, that's, that's, you might be using a thicker letter than that. But ten pounds is sort of uh, sort of a standard. Um, Eight pounds and lower is going to go in even easier, as you've seen with the thinner braid. Um, so for me, that's the biggest fault with it. I don't know if it's something to do with uh, the design. Uh, if you can, if you look in there now, it's a huge gap there. Now, obviously, the cap around the brakes there seals that gap, but I don't believe it's doing it as well as it might. Um, is the sprue supported? Well, yeah, I think so. There's not a not a wobble there, but 
yeah, I'm not convinced with that. And I, I did have it happen quite a lot, even though I didn't get it on film as much as I wanted. Um, so there you go. Uh, what did I think of the reel overall? Uh, well, since I've got that screw that I've already mentioned that won't tighten properly um, here. Um, QC may be an issue, and I've heard of other people having issues, but then there may be lots of people out there who aren't. Do I think the reel's uh, usable? Yes, it's usable. What am I disappointed in? That gap between the spool and the frame, because if that was right, it would be a really good reel in my eyes. I love the amount of brakes you got on it. I love the, the range you can use. So I'm throwing most things around three and a half to two and a half. I love the fact it did actually throw a one and a half gram lure. And um, with practice, I could get a lot better at it. But it wasn't easy. It's not an Alder Baron. It's not a Haib or a Rise, you know, a Conquest. Those sort of reels that uh, flight feathers that can do it easily. It is hard work and practice. Um, yes, it comes with two spools, a light spool, a heavier spool. So that's 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 good, and it threw all those lures you you saw me do. But I had far too many birds nests which I didn't capture on film. And hopefully the little demonstration I've just shown you will have uh, shown you why. So, no, a Mark II, I suspect if they fix those things I've talked about, yeah. Is it a hero and a half shell? No, not quite. It could be, but it's not, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't recommend it at this point, which is, is sad, really. If I wanted a smaller reel, I'd go for the Acura Hick 50 or one of the other DWU variants. Saying that, I prefer the brakes on the Ninja Turtle compared to the Acura. I think this guy's the Acura is a little over brake, under brake for me, so I added some extra magnets. If I wanted a larger reel, then I'd go for the um, Caesar uh, Commando. Uh, as it will I have the two spools and it will... Just about get down as low as the uh, either of these reels. Uh, this will go lower. That was one and a half grams. Mm, maybe not with a commando. Um, best bet is buy one of each of these or one of the other variants of each of these. So the BMC 100 in this case or the GKA uh, 200, which is actually a 100 size reel. The Acura Hick 50. There's a new version of the Pro out. That's probably going to be better than this, I would imagine. Or the Dark Wolf Ultra. Something like that. This just hasn't got the pedigree yet, but it's got the promise. So, you know, it's not all bad. There's a lot of good with it as well. But it's my job as a reviewer to pick it apart. I hope that helps. I hope I've shown you the pluses and minuses of it throughout the video. Please like and subscribe. Um, share all of those things because the more you do... Uh, the more it helps me to get another 25, 30 pound reel um, to review because they are coming thick and fast at the minute in the BFS world. Or maybe even a dearer one. I might fancy something a little bit dearer. Who knows? Cheers. Thanks. As always, Constant Angler.